Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. We're really excited to talk to you today about wood and wood products and all the neat things you can do with them. My name is Paul, and I'm one of the lucky people who get to work at Xena Forest. Here are just a couple housekeeping notes before we dive in. There's a chat over on the side of your screen, probably on the right side. Feel free to say hello there, and that's a great place for any questions. As we go along, make sure you pop your questions in that chat, and we'll try to deal with them. And if you have any technical problems, I'll do my best to try to sort you out. Today's tour is being recorded, and we will send you a recording afterwards by email so you can review it and send it to all your friends or whatever you like. Our topic today is a showcase of some of the things you can do with local wood. Our last few webinars about, have been about how we grow trees and make them into these products. And if you missed those, I'll include a link to those in an email after the webinar. Okay, so with all that in mind, I'm going to turn this over to President of Xena Forest Products and recent uh, Portland Business Journal 40 Under 40 honoree, Mr. Ben Doimling. Welcome, Ben. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for that. Um, um, well, it's fun to be back with everybody and new and um, returning um, folks. We're going to cover a whole lot here. I'm going to um, we're sort of framed by three specific case studies about different projects that I feel like showcase a lot of the interesting things that we can do with this wood. Um, in between, there will be lots and lots of pictures. Um, we're gonna probably sort of go fairly fast through these pictures, so feel free to jump in with questions in the chat as we go along to ask questions as we go, and Paul will interrupt me and, and I'll try to answer them as we go along. So. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Um, this first project we call the Ultra Yurt. It was a um, complete DIY homeowner project um, that we worked on. And the homeowners completely built this house themselves and specified all the materials in there. We provided a massive amount of Western big leaf maple, the whole ceiling, all the ceiling paneling is is western maple and it's basically a very 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 large yurt that they built and around our 12-sided house and maple is a fantastic species for an application like this for for the, the paneling it's beautiful it has lots of color it has lots of figure it's fairly soft so it's not as common as a flooring material but for walls and ceilings and things like that it really shines and this was really a favorite uh, project of mine because it um it just really showed up this this large expanse of, of maple on this on the ceiling this really innovative uh, innovative way and in addition they also did cabinets and trim and pretty much all of the interior woodwork in the house was made out of out of our western maple um, again, it was a complete DIY. The homeowners built all the cabinets themselves, and we just provided the the, the material, and they sort of took it from there. Um, and this was one where we were able to sort of work very closely. We, you know, work closely with them on the on the, the design and the particular specifications for for all the different elements that they did, and. Uh, the the neat thing was this house is situated on a piece of forest land, large piece of forest land that's they're currently restoring and really and we helped with some forestry consulting as well just as sort of separate from the house project but um they're doing similar things to what we were doing here at xena and it was a neat opportunity to um, help another landowner think through how to manage their their oak forest and and prairie and, and wetlands that they that they have this amazing property um, where this house is situated right in the middle of um, and uh, yeah here you can see sort of an overall shot it was just this this very large open floor plan um, very few walls no ceilings in any of the rooms so everything was open open air and they had these beautiful wood stoves in the space as well, which really um, was very, very well insulated in the wood stoves, kept this place, this large, large area, very, very comfortable. And um, um, we saw a couple cabinets here in this project, and cabinets are a, a 
classic thing that you can work, you know, product that you can make out of out of all of our local hardwoods. So those were Western Maple. There's also Oregon Ash and Oregon Oak. This is an Oregon Oak set of cabinets right here. And the the color and figure that you get from our local species just makes for these very beautiful, interesting cabinets that are, um, for the most part, not going to be very uniform or, or boring, shall we say. They're going to have character that really can be featured in in these you know large surfaces that you get with cabinets or ceilings or, or paneling. And the Oregon Oak especially has has beautiful. Um, color and figure to it. It's very different than the maple. It's much denser, which um, lends itself to different applications, much stronger. But um, this, I have to do a quick shout out to one of our favorite partners here. This was made by a company in Portland called Made, um, run by Bo Haygood, who, who's done a lot of work with us and does really fantastic um, woodwork of all sorts. Uh, and here's another um, set of oak cabinets, more select, more uniform um, look, but still that classic Oregon oak grain and, and color color scheme. This was a project with Winsome Construction um, up in wine country, um, north of McMinnville a little ways. And um, then this was actually a shout out to my brother Ruben, um, a project that he did. These are Western maple cabinets um, with an oak floor and then Douglas fir trim in this house. And um, there's, with all of these species, there's a range of grades. This was a more subtle, more uniform maple that he chose for this project. So there's, there's, there's definitely options throughout these species of, of color and grain. But um, um, yeah, this was def definitely a little subtler look. And, Case study number two, I'm calling Coast Custom. This was um, a fully custom project. And when I say custom, we we worked with the homeowner to, um, um, to be perfectly honest, we started with them with some forest management help and some consulting help and help them think about, uh, think through a forest thinning. We actually helped them mark the stands and lined them up with a logger. This was a huge old, old oak tree that was, on its last legs, it was it was starting to die and ready to come down. This was on the edge of this thinning project that we did. So we helped them with the thinning, and from there, brought the wood up to our place, um, sawed it up. Here's again this amazing log. It, this was a little tree that started growing in um, 1760. So. 40 years before, 45 years before Lewis and Clark showed up here in Oregon. This was a massive ancient old tree. Um, had lived a very long life, was was starting to die, and we were able to turn it into some all sorts of things that are now living on for this homeowner. And you can see when trees get this big, we have to use the chainsaw to break the log down into pieces that our sawmill can handle which may adds an extra little bit of adventure to the project. Um, but going back to the custom nature of this, we, we the, the, the homeowner retained ownership of the material throughout the process. We just processed it for them. And so we helped them with the, with the management and the logging and the wood came up to us. We sawed it up to their specifications with a particular project in mind. They were building a beach house. And fast forward, um, Three, year, three years later, the wood was dry, and here's the floor installed in the new beach house. And this was these projects are really neat because the the story of the wood is, is retained; it stays constant through the project. So these were trees that the homeowner had grown up around, and was she was able to put them back into her house where she is living now. And so that story continues to live on in a very, very specific and very real sort of way. Um, some of the challenges of custom are they have very long lead times. You have to be, you know, on the ball to prepare for the fact that wood has to dry for one to three years and in our drying process. Um, in this case, the schedule worked beautifully for that. Um, they had the time, they were ahead of the game. They're working with Nathan Good Architects, a 
great architect, architecture firm here in Salem that um, understood that timeline and, and made, put the pieces together early enough that we were able to see this project through to completion. And um, yeah, just made for a really beautiful, beautiful floor out of those, that one tree and, and a lot of other trees from that place as well. Um, and this next um, project is, is another custom um, for the same builder, Winsome Construction again, where, and this is Douglas Fir, and this was a little bit of an anomaly for us. We um, don't normally work with fir, but we were providing so much hardwood for this project, we, we made an exception and sought up a ancient old growth fir log that had fallen down next to the job sites. Um, and it had died and fallen 10 years prior, I think. And we sought it up in the whole office. Every piece of fur in this office was came out of that one log. And um, the floors, the cabinets, they took a round and cast it into the floor um, from that tree and made for a unique and, and fascinating, fascinating floor in a very photogenic um, space. And the, the beauty of these custom projects is there's when, I'm, when we buy logs, they're, they're beautiful logs, they're special, but they're, they go into our, our mix. And the, the particular space where that tree grew gets forgotten to an extent. Whereas when the customer retains ownership of the woods, it's, um, that story travels with the woods all the way to the final project. And that continuity um, has value for, for a lot of projects and is a lot of fun for us to, to, um, to work with that and work with those special pieces of wood. Uh, and moving on to furniture, um, we have some wonderful partners that we've been working with for many years um, in the furniture arena, and primarily um, the joinery. They're a, a furniture shop in Portland, and they have, um, in this particular case, this is a standing desk made by a comp another Portland company called Fully. And Fully and the joinery and Xena have partnered for a couple of years now to build these, um, the joinery builds the tops out of Xena Oak. And so when you go to Fully, you can have a bunch of different top styles that you can order. And the oak is going to be Xena Oak um, coming, being made by the joinery and going on a Fully stand that they make. And this has been a fun partnership. All three of our companies are very like-minded. Um, Fully and the joinery are both B Corps. Xena would be if we were a little bit larger. Um, and here's another sampling of other joinery pieces that, that they build. They build just incredible furniture. And we've, we feel very fortunate to be their primary supplier of, of, of Oregon White Oak. Ben, can you so, just say a little bit yeah. about what is a B Corp? Oh, a B Corp stands for a beneficial corporation. It is a way to um, signify that you are paying as a business, are paying attention to more than just the bottom line, but are paying attention to sort of what might be called the triple bottom line of economic health, social health, and um, um, ecological health. I think those are the they're, they're sort of the three, but but to um, it's it's actually recorded as with the Secretary of State as, as an extra designation on your business as a way to sort of show that you are as a business um, taking your employees and the surrounding environments and your community um, into account as you run your business. And so, it's a wonderful group of B Corps um, in in Oregon that that have gone the extra mile to sort of go through that process. Um, and this is not a joinery bed. This is another, but another example of, of this is Western Maple with a live edge headboard. And um, the furniture options that have come through Xena with, with our Xena wood is, is, is limitless in many ways. And I wanted to, sorry, interrupting you again, Ben. Um, some of these pictures are submitted through social media. Um, so thanks to everybody who sent in pictures of their projects. Uh, you'll see a couple of those sprinkled in here throughout the presentation. Absolutely. Um, I want to give another shout out to a um, furniture shop here in Salem, um, Sparrow Woodworking. Um, we've 
along with the joinery there are other primary furniture partner and they have this fantastic program where they provide job training for new refugees to Salem and teach them working skills as well as language and, and um, um, business skills and build fantastic furniture. This is um, an Oregon ash table. We haven't talked about ash very much. We'll talk about it a little bit more, but um, they do both furniture restorations, new, new, new furniture, as well as all sorts of other woodworking. And we have partnered a lot with them over the last number of years. And um, they do also a lot of restaurant interiors in primarily the Salem area. So this, um, and last but not least would be, John, is Jonathan Nussbaum, furniture maker. He's up in Portland. This is an oak table and set of chairs that he built out of Xena Oak. And um, Jonathan has been probably one of our longest running collaborators. We've been working with him for, since we started, since Xena, Xena Forest Products started making lumber. And um, he continues to crank out amazing, amazing pieces. This is an extendable table that extends to about three times that length to seat a large group. Um, yeah, it's completely custom made by Jonathan. Countertops, um, all three of our species lend themselves beautifully to countertops. Again, maple is a, is a popular one that we, we make, in, make countertops out of. Um, this is our sort of classic side grain top. Um, and we outsource the glue up to a local shop, but everything else we, we make in-house and we can make these in almost an unlimited range of sizes. Um, each one is custom made um, to, um, to match the job site, match the space. Um, and there's side grain options as well as a true end grain option, which you know, a true butcher block that you can cut on and chop on or just utilize as a beautiful centerpiece, um, a sort of a high visibility um, piece. And, but again, we make these in all three of our species. And so, um, yeah, depending on the, on the color and the look. Case study number three, we call PDX Overlook. This was a, um, massive whole house remodel up in the West Hills of Portland. And we were fortunate to get in at the ground floor, so to speak, and provide a, a wide range of materials for this project. In addition to the flooring, which you see here, this is our, our character oak, Oregon white oak flooring. Um, we partnered with, with again, Made Studio in Portland, who built these custom stair, this custom stairwell out of our oak. And um, then a whole range of other built-ins and, and pieces in this house. Um, and this was a almost a two-year project and um, ended up being just a phenomenally stunning space. Um, and the kitchen islands is another made piece um, of our oak, Xena oak. And... Um, then the, the bed as well. This was the, the headboard of that bed is solid um, oak diamond tiles with, with a relief on there. And this was, um, there's sometimes been a, a idea that Oregon oak is an inferior species, that it's not as good as, as Eastern white oak. Um, and I think that has dogged the species over the decades here in Oregon as people have tried and failed to work with it. And a project like this are testament to the fact that there's nothing nothing inferior about Oregon oak whatsoever. It's, it can hold its own as a species for woodworkers to use just as much as any other species out there, if not more so. And so, um, it's just a matter of knowing how to saw it and dry it correctly and, and, and work with it right and treat it, treat it as a hardwood species. So um, this is probably one of the prime examples of, of how oak can be made to, into almost anything. Um, the bathroom vanity cabinets are also Oregon oak in this space. And um, the, the, this was a fantastic sort of indoor-outdoor um, blends where the 
flooring goes up over the walls and the ceiling and then right through the glass it's more oak uh, mirroring it on the outsides and there's a very clever floor construction that lets the water drain through but our this, we used our engineered oak for this application that will um, stay stable throughout the summer and winter range of seasons here in Oregon and um, took a lot of careful work to build but the end result was this is stunning and um, which brings me to the conference topic of utilizing oak as an exterior or any of our species in particular but oak in particular as an exterior product and while limited it it definitely has utility it is incredibly rot resistant um, this is another example of it being used in an exterior application um, when treated accordingly and given the room to move and breathe, um, it, it is a beautiful accent for any exterior application. And um, you have to treat it appropriately and allow it to move a little bit, but um, it will outlive most any other species grown in North America as far as its, its longevity and rot resistance because of its, its density and durability. Moving on to a, a smattering of commercial projects, we've, um, in addition that we've been mostly looking at residential projects to date um, in the web so far in the webinar, we've worked on and collaborated on a number of commercial projects throughout the Wyoming Valley and are doing more as time goes on. This is a classic 2020 picture. Um, how can you tell that this was not taken in 2019? Um, this was a fun project. This was the Meyer Memorial Trust, their new headquarters building designed by Lever Architecture and built by Walsh Construction. And um, we were fortunate to provide um, both flooring and, and stairs in this space. And working in the commercial world is very different than in the residential world, but um, one that we've, um, over the last couple of years, grown to the scale where those these projects are completely attainable. Um, just a quick side note, I wanted to put in a plug. These are mass plywood panels. The whole building was framed with um, mass plywood construction. So heavy, you know, um, um, all wood construction. There's no steel um, construction in this building. And we clad the stair treads in Western Maple. Um, but our friends at Ferris Lumber, East of Salem, provided all the mass plywood for this building as well. It was one of the, one of the first of its kind here in Oregon. Uh, They chose maple in this space because they like the way it looks, even though it's a little bit softer, but it will definitely hold up just fine. Um, this is Salem Hospital, their new um, outpatient rehab facility. And this was again, a hybrid of a custom. We processed some trees off the site for Salem Hospital and then supplied some of our own material as well. Um, created this very, fat, very neat feature wall, um, partnering with Restoration Creek, one of our um, flooring installation partners we work with a lot here in Salem. And, um, Salem Summit Company, one of the uh, outdoor gear store in Salem. This was the ODOT um, headquarters building next to the Capitol. Um, yeah, going back to Salem Summit, there's ODOT. We, ODOT was one of our early commercial projects we did. We supplied all of the wood throughout the five-story state building, um, state office building. And um, not much to see. It's a very uniform look that they went for, but it's all Oregon oak throughout that building. Um, a quick plug for Oregon ash. It's one that it's a lesser species that we work with. Um, we don't get as much of it. It grows along the creeks and riparian areas, but when we do, it's it's absolutely gorgeous and a completely different look from either the oak or the maple. And here's a handful of um, ash flooring. Um, pictures to sort of give a sense of, of what the Oregon ash looks like. It's um, very much sort of a, I'm, I call it a yin and yang look. It's got dark marbled brownish heartwoods with, with light bright white sapwoods and you get a, a mixture of both in the in, in ash and um, they sort of set each other off pretty nicely um, but it's it's anything but uniform. It's definitely very very colorful.
Um, heat registers, this was a side business that we took on a couple of years ago. We um, built ourselves a, a separate wood shop and took over a business um, that was retiring making wooden heat registers. And we make these to match our, our three species as well as all, we also stock all the domestic um, species grown in North America that we make heat registers out of. And so Paul, who not only sets up webinars and runs the office, also is um, the man behind the registers. He runs the wood shop and, and builds registers. Um, and he's not um, uh, keeping everything else going at Xena. And um, it's a fun little add-on project that we've taken on and, and keeps us very busy. And we're going to sort of round this out with some some fun um, projects. Um, we've been fortunate to work on a couple different art projects. This was this is the Salem Library, and um, worked with a local artist, Kristen Coons, to provide logs um, log sections from our from the Zena Forest for these these sort of featured entryways into the children's wing of the Salem Public Library, and. So, um, sort of similar to custom, these sorts of artistic projects are just so much fun to work on and is an enduring, you know, this, this will live on in the Salem Library. Um, this is a shout out to um, Bill Wessinger of Wessinger Woodworks. He um, builds boats and also amazing sculptures, um, vultures, whales, um, different animals, and uses a lot of Oregon white oak for his bents. Um, um, all the all the the thin thin pieces in these sculptures are Oregon white oak, and so um, these are for sale. You can find them in out, art galleries around Portland, and someday I would love to have one in in, in my house. They're amazing amazing sculptures. And um, another local artist, um, Gary McGuire, is a wood turner. Um, this is an Oregon oak bowl that he he made. He builds these fantastic. Um, creations um, comes up to the mill and and gets our odd, strange, weird pieces of wood and turns them into beautiful pieces of art. Um, and and lastly is boats. Um, in addition to all the other things we've talked about, it turns out that Oregon white oak in particular is one of pretty much the best species out there for for boats. And um, these are skin on frame kayaks and canoes that um, Brian Schultz with Cape Falcon Kayak builds. And we supply large quantities of, of bending oak, which is going to be green, um, freshly cut wood that's absolutely perfect, um, that has no knots, no, no grain variation that they use for steam bending into all the ribs on his boats. He makes these amazing boat creations and also sells plans and kits. Um, for everyone, anyone to build their own. They're fairly simple to build, and he has amazing plans and videos on how to build them on his website, um, Cape Falcon Kayak. And so um, that's a fun um, extra thing that we get to work on. And lastly here, this is a Viking ship. We supply two semi-truck loads of, of wood out of the Xena Forest for um, a gentleman up in, in Washington who builds um, true traditional reproduction Viking ships. Um, this built exactly the same as they were built thousands of years ago and um, using traditional methods, traditional methods, although some motorized equipment here and there, but primarily hand tools. And um, yeah, I think these pictures speak for themselves there. This is a, a fascinating construction. There it is under sale in um, Puget Sounds. Um, so that was a, a whirlwind of pictures and um, me rambling on about all the different things we can do. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, yeah thanks everyone for, for coming and thanks Ben for, for that. Oral one tour. Um, before we sign off today, we've got a little bit of time. I wonder if anyone out there 
um, has any questions. Uh, so just pop those in the chat if you have any. Um, ben, if you had if you had to build a house from scratch, what kind of flooring would you put in it? What species would you pick? I put Oregon oak in there. Um, it's so dense, so durable, so beautiful. Um, primarily because of its wear wear ability to to just be so dense and durable. But I love the way it looks. And it's the most quintessentially Oregon wood that we have. Yep. Yeah, there's a sign in, isn't there a sign in Bush Park that says something like Oregon signature tree, Oregon white oak? It's a very Probably. quintessentially Oregon. Yeah. When tree. I when I am old and retired, I will lead a campaign to change the Oregon state tree from Douglas fir to Oregon white oak. Looks like we didn't leave much for, for questions. Um, there's one. Uh, so Caroline wants to know, is ash hard enough for flooring? Absolutely. Um, so ash is similar in density to red oak, um, which is probably the most common flooring species in North America. Um, it's, you know, even maple is, is plenty hard enough to last for a century as, as a floor. Um, it's maple is similar in density to Douglas fir, and we have all seen the old fir floors throughout the old houses here in Western Oregon. So they show dents and scratches more quickly. The harder you go, the fewer dents and scratches the um, floor will show, but that's more of an aesthetic issue than really a functional or performance issue. The floor will still hold up. It's not going to fall apart on you. Um, so, and ash is right there in the middle. Ash. Um, you have to work pretty hard to to dent and scratch it, and um, it's it's yeah, very more than adequate for density wise for flooring. Um, Bob wants to know he spotted the sawmill in one of our pictures and wondered who made that the band sawmill. Oh, the sawmill is made was made. They're not in business anymore by S and W Edger Works out of Alabama. Um, best sawmill ever made. Um, Paul, uh, Paul, I'm seeing your question here. You're asking about vendors we work with in Salem and Portland. Are you asking about the furniture makers or, or uh, can you clarify that question for me? Um, and while you're doing that, uh, Ben, Aaron wants to know if we work with one of the partners you mentioned, whether it be, you know, Sparrow or the joinery or uh, maybe Jonathan Dustbump, can, can they request Xena Wood or is it just sort of you get what you get? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, going back to the vendors question as well, we most everything we do is mill direct. We don't really wholesale our wood very much. Um, so when you're looking at furniture, partnering with one of those shops that I mentioned is a great way to partner and have them build something, but you can come out to the forest, choose the boards or have them choose the boards for you. Um, when it comes to flooring or countertops or most anything, else, uh, we sell most all of it um, right out of the mill here. So all our eye is always the first first place to talk, first place to call. Yep. Yeah, we don't make you don't make you find a middle person to work through first. You can just you get to talk to us for better for worse. Um, I think that's it. Uh, any other questions? Last, very last opportunity. Um, if you think of something later. Like I said earlier, there'll be a follow-up email, and you're welcome to shoot anything our way. Um, if you want to, we always like answering questions about local wood. That's what we talk about. Um, oh, Ben, one more. Can you recommend someone in the Portland area to build a patio? Um, yes. Um, I'm forgetting their name right now, but they just did a beautiful patio for a client's house. Um, email us. Um, I will get you their name. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, they, Winona, we'll grab that to you. Uh, they, yeah, I, I know exactly the, the outfit. Um, they, 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 it was a, yeah, they do fantastic work. So, uh, stay tuned. Cool. Um, well, thanks again for joining everyone. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We hope you did too. I'll send you an email later today with the recording and the other info that I mentioned earlier. If you'd like to keep up to date on developments here at the mill, 
uh, sign up for our email newsletter. You can do that on our website. We send out emails every now and then about events at Xena, uh, like this one, as well as our thoughts on trees and forestry and sustainability, and sometimes even pictures of cool wood products, projects as well. And if you're interested in any of these products, we would love to send some samples your way. We have a solid sample library, as in a very good sample library, uh, and we can usually have samples in your hands within 48 hours. So don't hesitate to uh, poke us for those. And we hope you can join us next month for our next webinar, which we're calling Quarters On, Riffs On, Flats On, a deep dive into these terms and their implications on designing with wood. Thanks again for being here, and we will see you next time. Thanks, everyone.